Hey guys and welcome back to Double NKH2 where we're doing another fast paced electric bike review video. This one on the Oremo Scrambler 100. Might look like a tiny little bike but it is rated for a max payload of 396 pounds. So let's go over a few specs, features, and then we will dive into uh, a, a good little ride, you know? See how far we can make it. So I unboxed this the other night to get the battery on charge and it came very well packaged. Didn't find any damage at all on the frame. Uh, inside, some of the loose components you're gonna have are the user manual, which we'll go over at the end of the video. A charger that's rated at three amps output. A little tool kit, hopefully it has everything we need to slap it together. The keys, a two year warranty card. So a glance at that. A reflector, a front axle, some aluminum pedals. A seat that looks pretty cushy, and yeah, that thing, and a shock built in. And these little fat tires are kind of neat. They're three inches wide, 20 inches tall. Chow Yang, got the reflectors on them. Disc brakes on the front and rear, 160 millimeter rotors. They seem to be, oh, about maybe two mil thick on there. These are cable actuated. The hub motor, 750 watts. Got the seven speed Shimano. Battery, 48 volts at 11.6 amp hours. And with that three amp charger, you're probably looking like a four hour recharge time from dead battery. They advertise 3.5 hours. Top speed on this is 20 mile an hour. They're estimating the range to be 25 to 35, pure electric or 35 to 45 if you're pedal assisting. But of course that's gonna vary a lot. I'm 180 pounds, six foot three. Let's slap this together and go for a ride. Start by putting your pedals on. They're marked left and right. The left side, you just have to go lefty tighty, reverse threads. Good and tight on those. So far this wrench is working well. I hear the ice cream man going by. I'm not gonna chase him down this time because running low on, on daylight. We can now take the dummy axle out on the front and we'll drop that front wheel on take the brake pad separator out too i suppose we should throw the bars on first too this has got the folding holding stem which is nice action it feels real tight and oh yeah that's good that does lock into place you have to slide this up to unlock and fold that it's a real portable bike use the five mil allen remove these bolts and the clamp and we can swing our bars, drop them into place, make sure that you have it oriented the right way and you're not jamming the cables or twisting them all up. And then I'll drop this clamp back on, but leave it loose for now. Now we can drop the front wheel on, but make sure you have even threads sticking out on both sides and that these nuts aren't loose. So slide the disc in between the brake pads on the caliper, drop that into place. Make sure it's fully seated into these forks. You can see there's nothing keeping it from popping out. It does have a spot for one of those little safety washers. However, that's not included. Oh, I'm gonna slip this guy in from over here. You see you got the spring and little uh, rubber grommet guy. And then on the other side, spring and nut. You guys know how to do this. So get it where it should be and your cam lock should fold over with fairly stiff resistance and they'll pull it back. Let's lift up that front wheel. Been straight true, not a bunch of dragging. If you got to adjust the brake caliper, it's these two five millimeters, and you do usually have some wiggle room there. You can grab those brakes. Of course, these ones are feeling good, maybe a little tighter on this side. You do have the quick adjust up top, but I always recommend uh, when you're going to adjust these, just come down, loosen the Allen, and pull the cable through to your micro adjustments up top. Of course, you have some, some micro adjustments down here, but just do the, the adjustment with the cable. Now, hydraulic brakes are nice. They do, you get a better feel with them, but cable brakes are cool because they're just so simple and easy to fix. Drop the reflector on the seat post, open up the clamp, put the seat in, and I'll put it at the, the highest mark here. In addition to the seat being all the way up there, you can raise the bars as well. Oh, all right. The max insert on that, it's labeled on the back, is going to be right there. You, again, have some adjustment on these cam locks if you need to tighten them down. With these up at the max, here's me stepping over and trying to get on the bike. This feels super lightweight. The advertised weight is only 64 pounds. Woohoo! Uh, and let's see how I fit, I fit on there. Uh, that feels pretty darn good actually. I think I'll ride with it up at the max. You know, I'm not getting the full stroke out of my leg there, but it feels, feels pretty good. And now that I got those bars positioned, we're centered, I can tighten down this clamp the rest of the way. It's not a stepped clamp, so just make sure you have even gaps on the front 
and back and uh, tighten it down. We can fold our display back up. The reflector up on the bars is not big enough to go out in the center. Now you gotta leave it kind of just off to the side. To turn the bike on, there's a little sticker showing you instructions. But we can drop our key in and then let's see, yeah, one, one click. The key does have to stay in there when you're riding. So if you got them on a big keychain, that could get annoying. Let's see, to turn it on, this is your up and down, and then on the side you have what looks like probably a power button. Power button's right here on the front and bottom. Fires right up, nice digital display. Comes in PAS1. Let's uh, so the throttle's over on the right side, built into the grip. Very nice. Let's try out a couple of the features, the walking feature. All right, there you hold down that negative so you can walk it up hills. Was it ready for it to take off? Uh, we'll go over a few more features in there now, but you can see it did come on miles, and we have five bars up on the battery. Don't forget to set your tire pressure. I call for a max of 35, and never a bad idea to go over every nut and bolt on the bike to check for tightness, uh, along with wearing a helmet when you ride. I always recommend that. I don't always wear one, but you should if you're riding. So it's nice that it's not the law and you have a choice, but it's certainly a wise move to wear a helmet. Yeah, such a beautiful evening for a ride. Let me go over this display super quick. Uh, fairly dim, like in this weather it's totally fine. If the sun was shining on it, you might have a hard, hard time reading. Now right here is your light button, and this bike doesn't have any lights on it, but of course if you hit that, it's gonna dim it even more. And then right above that is the info. Well, it's normally on trip. You see I laid down 1.7. There's our odometer, the max. 21.3 mile an hour and our average and then for your power assist you can go all the way up to five if you leave it on zero the throttle does still work then you ride like a little motorcycle so pedaling this around in the first gear with no power i mean it is it feels lightweight it feels good and let's try this shifter out banger in the second third fourth fifth sixth seventh no adjustments needed there just noticing this little restaurant I used to eat here years ago. I remember when they fully redid it, but look at that, they used OSB and the water got in there and just caused a bunch of water damage. But anyway, in the seventh gear, we're cruising good. I can hit it into power assist one now. This guy's getting done on his car, put some, some hard work in on the street. And that essentially keeps us at uh, 11, 12 mile an hour and I'm just rotating my legs. So we go to power assist two, that bumps us up to 14 on three, 16 on four, 18 mile an hour, and then on five, 20 miles an hour, which you can see we're just rotating. It's got a speed sensor in there, so as long as you're rotating your, your legs, you will hold that speed. Bam, on the river. So even though there's no suspension, these tires handle really good on the gravel. We're about to hit some even rougher stuff. And I'm holding just just one one hand. I, you know, we're up at ooh, on speed five. This thing takes off on you. I'll put it down to the speed one for this. Uh, definitely a good amount of power for the small bike. But you know, if I drop these tires down to 15, we'd be gliding right over this. You really don't need suspension. This is uh, it's not bad. When you got the fat tires, you're good to go. The nice thing about this bike being small and light is you can grab it basically one hand. Look at that. One hand, walk over these train tracks, it's no problem. And I was gonna ride this all the way down further, uh, but the path is no more. I don't wanna kill our range completely. Yeah, just down these tracks is this super cool property that I wonder if they, they did anything with it yet. They were, uh, I heard they were gonna turn it into like an Amazon warehouse or something. You can see these railroad tracks used to lead right into it and it's just the old foundation left. But can't imagine what a property like this would cost along the river. I mean, come on. So we're cruising the top speed, 20 mile an hour. It is a true, pretty much a yeah, 20 mile an hour on the GPS. Uh, I think in the name of getting some decent range, we will hit the canal path and uh, keep on the smooth, smooth terrain for a little bit. As far as riding this with no hands, it's doable, but definitely a, a much more squirrely bike. That's what you get with the, the smaller wheels. You know, it's never gonna be quite as stable at speed. I think with the, the bars being all well, tall, I mean, you can ride no hands. It just doesn't feel like straight as narrow, you know? 
We are coming through the Capitol Complex. I did want to show you guys an acceleration test if you leave it on speed five on the seventh gear. So we're cranking real slow. Oh yeah, it takes right off. It's 750 watts on this. I mean, it's it's got a ton of power. And that small span, we jumped to 20 like it was nothing. Ooh, the brakes are real good too. Sometimes they don't like you riding through here after hours, but it's such a beautiful spot. All fresh new buildings. At 20 mile an hour, you can still pedal pretty good too. You got, you got good pedal authority. Right here, we're passing the old barracks museum. Pretty neat place. Uh, a lot of people actually come to Trenton for its historical value and, and these these neat old buildings. Heck, at, at one point it was the capital of the country, right? I think for like a week or something during the uh, Revolutionary War. Battle of Trenton, when George Washington crossed the Delaware River and overtook the Hessians, right? And we're gonna tag the canal right here. Smooth sailing on out. Oh, that was a glass bottle I just ran over. You catch anything? No? All right, good luck, man. As I'm riding down the path, I look to my right. Even with all the foliage, you can still see the old Mercer Medical Center. I cannot believe they haven't done anything with that. Yeah, they knocked it down. It's just uh, such a beautiful, cool building, but... It's, it's a shame, it just sits there idle, abandoned. What is that, gas tanks or something? Somebody dumped there? Plastic gas tanks? I can't tell. We're now 12 miles in, crossing over to Delaware, back into Pennsylvania. And we're showing three bars left on there. Alrighty, a little while later, we have made it back home and very impressed with the range. We got 31.2 miles. Still had some juice too. We were doing like 10, 11 mile an hour and got down to zero bars flashing. So I figured I'd call it quits there. That was full electric, did a little bit of pedaling. And you know, I like that they advertised 25 to 35 and we got within that range. There's so many of these e-bikes, they all advertise 60, 70 miles and you know, I generally see half of, of the advertised amount. So, so big thumbs up on an actual accurate uh, range. You know, I didn't think I was gonna like this bike at all because of its small size, but I gotta say being six foot two, it felt extremely comfortable. Doing the 20 mile an hour when I did pedal, I, I felt like I was able to fully pedal the bike with my legs and, and overcome the power of the motor. And just really, it, it was comfortable, I, I gotta say. And, and you know, the cool thing about this though is you can drop the seat all the way down, drop the bars down to here. And so if I wanted to put Jen on here, I would imagine that she, she could uh, ride this bike with ease since it is fairly small. Me riding it now, now I look like I'm on a little kid's bike, but when it's all the way up, it felt really comfortable. Uh, the coolest feature of this bike, which we, we haven't really spoken about, is well, it's lightweight and super compact. Yeah, I folded the bars before, but I didn't show you folding the frame. So, uh, so you're yeah, getting on the, the train, it's rush hour. Uh, and they, they try to deny it because they say, oh, you, you, know, you don't have a folding bike. Well, now you do. Check that out. Folds right in half. And right now the kickstand's down, but if I flick the kickstand up, let's see, it's got the little center stand. Check out that tiny package. I mean, that is sweet. And let's say you want to make it even lighter, you pop the battery out and throw that in your backpack. How you do that is, let's see, you turn the key all the way, and then this little pin goes in, and then slide it on out. If you had a spare battery in your backpack, look at that. Of course, when you do charge this, you can just charge it without removing the battery. And with that out, you can easily one-hand this bike. I mean, I could do Carl sitting here with it. It's pretty darn light for what it is. I'm gonna go get this battery on charge and I will let you know right here how long that takes to get fully juiced to the green light. The Wabas bike has lots of greatness to offer. There are some downsides I'd like to mention. Uh, first is gonna be the lack of fenders 
you know, you, you end up with mud all over your back if you ride through puddles or on a canal path or such. Next is the fact that we don't have any lights built into the bike. So you can get a clip-on taillight, clip-on headlight, but having that built in is a very nice feature that I think should be standard on every single bike. So you get no brake light either, just no safeties at all. I wore a headlight tonight, it worked fine. It does have uh, switches still built into the, the brakes. So when you hit those, it will stop a uh, power assist on it. You also don't get a bell or horn from the factory, which every single bike should have a bell. Go on Amazon, get one, five, 10 bucks, no big deal. So I think I'm pretty much ready to wrap this review video up here. Definitely a giant thumbs up on the Aremo Scrambler 100. I think I'll be holding on to this for a little bit just because it's so darn portable. I think if I pedal, I'll be able to get that range up more around 50 miles if you're pedaling real hard the whole time. Uh, over 20 mile an hour, you know, some of these you can, you can crack them. Haven't looked into that and the options, there's usually a way to, to fix that, but not, not going into that in this video. If, if, you, if you need to go faster than 20, but your range usually goes out the window too. So I will drop a link down below if you want to check them out to their website. I usually don't mention the pricing in videos because a lot of time it's changing or these bikes aren't even out yet. And so yeah, go to the website if you want to check them out. Thanks so much for tuning into the video. Appreciate you guys and see you in another one very soon. No nonsense, no how to over out. And like usual at the end, I want to flip through the manual real quick, so in case you guys want to pause that, take a look and try to go real quick. Get you one shot of each page.